Less than three miles from where the towers once stood, clues to their collapse lie in gigantic, twisted heaps in this New Jersey scrapyard. Time is short. The piles of high-strength steel evidence are being cut into chunks for export to recycling plants in the Far East. The deals with the scrap merchants have already been made. As each massive piece arrives, huge grappling machines struggle with lumps of metal that weigh over twice as much as the trucks used to transport them. The very ground shakes as they drop just a few feet. That some of this steel fell a quarter of a mile to earth is difficult to believe. And how anyone inside survived is hard to imagine. But a few did survive, among them firemen, who witnessed the destruction from the inside of a stairwell as the North Tower collapsed on top of them. We were all in this little pocket in this stairway be between the fourth and the second floor. And this unbelievable sound, I still remember the sound, of steel, these massive steel beams that are roughly five feet deep twisting around us like they were little twist ties off a loaf of bread. Uh, I'll, I'll never, never forget it. The reason the Twin Towers fell is obvious. They were, after all, hit by large aircraft carrying many tons of jet fuel. But at the same time, it's not at all clear that any other skyscraper would have collapsed so soon or so completely. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that actually it collapsed like the way it did. Like everyone else, it was totally out of your human capacity to digest it and absorb it. Professor Hassan Astane is carrying out an analysis of the twisted remains that lie in the New Jersey scrapyard. He has been studying the condition of the steel columns in an attempt to find out what the collapse mechanism could have been. What you see here is actually very critical, very, very important. Perhaps this is the most important piece I have found so far. This piece comes from uh, most likely Tower 2, where the plane went in and exploded. This is the inside face of back columns. So plane went in, exploded right here, and the explosion hit this surface. What you see here is, first of all, a bend that is due to explosion. But more importantly, this is a signature of explosion here. This has happened due to explosive material hitting this column and, and making that bulge. So this is the floor where explosion happened. And the windows are blown away, everything is burned. Even fireproofing on this floor is burned and glazed to the steel. The fireproofing in the World Trade Center was a sprayed on dry, fragile material made of mineral fibers. Designed to protect the steel from heat, it appears that the fireproofing may have actually been blown away by the blasts from the impacts. Although every piece of steel in this scrapyard was treated, very little of the coating can be found. This piece, as you can see, has been burned. You can see the smoke and the fire effect on it. You can see some fireproofing, but really not much of it is left. So you can see that when the building was burning, there was no fireproofing left. 
The lack of fireproofing meant that the steel was extremely vulnerable to the heat from the kerosene. But what has intrigued investigators above all is that it may have had a disastrous effect on one particular part of the structure, the support for the massive open plan floors. The heavily distorted brackets that remain in the scrapyard suggest exactly the same thing to Professor Astene. You cannot bend the steel like this without cracking it, unless you warm it up. So what tells me, what this piece tells me is that this piece was very hot when the floor collapsed and bent it. So that must have been the initiation of collapse of this World Trade Center top.